good day to you, Guyana, and welcome to Facing the Nation. It is the final Friday in January 2017, and we're wondering where did it all go so quickly. So um, I know some of you made New Year's resolution. Some of us just don't. We just go with the flow. But um, I trust that you're on the path to achieving those resolutions. Of course, this is Facing the Nation, and I am Malika Ramsey. Thank you very much for joining us, and thanks for welcoming us into your homes for another very, what promises to be another very informative week. This week, as usual, we'll be focusing on two issues, two sectors. Of course, that would be the education sector and the public infrastructure sector. We're, however, going to begin with education. Um, months ago, a few months ago, you remember, you recall, of course, those who view often, you recall that uh, we were calling him the new kid on the block then. He's not so new anymore, so he's here to give you some highlights of what he would have been able to achieve thus far uh, since taking the position. That would be the Vice Chancellor of the University of Guyana, Professor Ivelog Griffith. Uh, many of us um, also refer to him as Dr. Ivelog Griffith. So he's here on Facing the Nation with us uh, today. Welcome back, sir. Delighted to be here and always interested in Facing the Nation. Wonderful. It's a pleasure to have you. And you look so relaxed today, so we're happy about that. Good. Relaxing <laughs> is a good thing. Being relaxed is a good thing. Great. Coming up in the second half of the program, I did promise you last week that a new feature now for Facing the Nation would be to have a monthly report from some of the ministries regarding developmental works and things they would have achieved and so on. So this month, um, this month, the final Friday in this month and every month, we will be focusing on the Ministry of Public Infrastructure. So coming up in the second half of the program, we'll be chatting with Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, the Honorable Annette Ferguson. So she'll be telling you uh, all about what she would have achieved thus far since the reading and the, the passing of uh, Budget 2017 in the National Assembly. Remember, that was read in December. But for now, let's talk uh, education. Professor Griffith, it's been more than six months since you took over, um, again, for want of a better term, took over the University of Guyana. What are some of the things you believe um, you would have been able to achieve and make, make a significant difference and significant impact? Well, before I answer the question, Malika, I want to take the opportunity of greeting your viewers to say okay. blessings for the new year. Mm -hmm. May we all enjoy good health. And productivity this year but I also want to especially greet our students who like you will be coming back yes. to semester two on Monday and our lecturers will be coming back I look forward to working with everyone to have a wonderfully productive semester I'm now at our university as part of the university community for seven months okay and I am delighted that we saw a significant appreciable change setting the stage for greater heights to be achieved, but also making some useful first set of achievements. And I'll give you three or four of those achievements. Great. Uh, our university has had a, an unfortunate neglect in some of the physical facilities, in the classrooms, mm -hmm. in not in having fans, not having chairs that are proper. We did a good deal of doing that improvement. We did a good deal of improving our student facility, the Dennis Irving Hall at Pleasance. And we did a good deal of setting the stage for tackling some of those longer term infrastructure issues. Okay. I'll give you two. Wi-Fi hmm. has been an issue on campus. Yes. When you go next week, I want you to test and tell me where some of the gaps have been filled because we're Great. making progress on that. Uh, we're making progress also on getting our power supply alternately provided to us. Okay. Power supply interruption, like the rest of the nation, has really undermined morale, affected delivery of quality students. So I'm thankful that the conversation we started with Giflin about partnering with Giflin in a variety of ways, one of which would be getting our power from them where we have a guarantee of stability and regularity. I'm thankful to the Minister of Public Infrastructure for approving. Uh, yeah. And so we'll be moving along those lines. But that is one of the very significant state-setting achievements of, of that past six months. Giflan, the conversation is about partnering in a variety of ways. 
uh, discounts. You're going to see an announcement soon of students and staff getting discounts, not only at the mall, but other, ven other entities owned by uh, Mr. Mr. B. Bat. And so for me, the first six months was stage setting, but also doing some tangible things. I'll tell you one thing I'd like to flag because it was history, and it was history that allowed us to do a variety of other things. Mm -hmm. For the first time in the history of the, United, of the University of Guyana, we asked the government for a supplemental subvention, and we got it. You got it. I asked for 225 million, knowing that I wouldn't get all. <laughs> I got 109.83 million. That money was inordinately important in helping us to do the preparation for the medical school reaccreditation. I'll come back to that. It was helpful for us to buy some of the furniture. GWLT, the, light, yes. the lights are always. Yeah, that, and we that's spend, the main room. We spend money in getting a new PA system. We spend money in fixing the wiring that wouldn't allow all the bulbs to be always being out. But I want to end by talking about an additional stage setting. I took a proposal to the Finance and General Co Purpose Committee meeting to reorganize. And as of October 1, we have a Deputy Vice Chancellery for Academic Engagement, a Deputy Vice Chancellery for Planning and International Engagement, a Deputy Vice Chancellor for Philanthropy, Alumni, and Civic Engagement. Our university, almost 55 years, needs to do what other mature and not so mature universities do, and that is do fundraising. So those positions that you just highlighted, those are all relatively new? Mm -hmm. Okay. New for some, but not new for others. I'll give you an example. The academic engagement. What we did is take the previous academic affairs and expanding it. So now as part of academic engagement, we have an undergraduate research program. Part of academic engagement, we're working towards a business school. I can tell you about that if you're interested. Part of academic engagement, we had just last week, a team from Florida International University that I invited to come and do a self and needs assessment for us to establish a center for excellence in teaching and learning. So the portfolio of what was academic affairs has been expanded to include things that are necessary if this university is to serve the nation it. better. And so I'm delighted that not only we recalibrated academics, I established an entirely new philanthropy, alumni, and civic engagement. I brought in a consultant to help us look at structure. He's coming back next week. We need as a university to have not only the outreach to the alums, but the outreach to business, the outreach to individual benefactors who want to give. So stage setting, second setting the basis for that. Uh, I took planning, which used to be part of another, no longer an existing unit, and put it with international affairs. We need to reach out internationally, intentionally, to bring resources to the university, to do collaborative research, to do collaboration, allow our students to go on exchanges. The, so, in essence, there was this lack or there was a weakness in terms of the international affairs area. Is that what you're saying? Yes. But, and that's quite ironic and interesting because you, there is the... Uh, the international relations course that is done at the University of mm -hmm. Guyana. So I'm thinking that you there now can be a link in terms of what you have um, created and uh, the, the students of themselves in that faculty. Mm -hmm. The international relations course is only one minuscule part of what any university with 8,000 students and seven faculties should be doing. We've got to be asking the question, how do we connect with international organizations? How can we connect with universities where there can be collaborative research, student exchanges? Excellent. How can we broaden the landscape of our international contacts? Two days ago, we had a meeting of UG and CARICOM Secretariat. Yes. Did you know, Malaika, that University of Ghana is by CARICOM Treaty an associate institution? But we've never done anything to actualize it. So I'm saying, 
if we've got the architecture for something like being a CARICOM associate institution, we need to do something with it. Earlier this week, I hosted a fellow from Nottingham University, Guyanese born, a Dr. Penelope Seibert. Point is, how do we actualize research collaboration? Next week, I'm hosting the Vice Chancellor from London South Bank University, who's agreed to be the champion in the UK for help to UG. In other words, there are ways in which, as other mature universities do, if you go to University of West Indies, you know what's one of the first acts of Vice Chancellor Sir Hilary Beckles? He created a pro-chancellery for international affairs. He invited former Ambassador Richard Bernal to help UE strengthen its international. Every university in the universe has to focus on international, and I intend for us to maximize the opportunities. Professor Griffith, um, you have said a lot thus far, and, and it, it is interesting because with this, people will now ask, where was this information before? I know you have done a lot of, um, uh, a, a lot of moving in the media, and, and rightfully so, and it is a good thing, but in terms of the achievement, is there an outlet coming directly from the University of Ghana? This is without depending on our uh, media, the media core countrywide. Is there a media outlet, a media unit coming from the University of Ghana that can feed this information in a more effective and efficient way to the general public so that we will know, well, look, our university really and truly is on the road to achieving great things? There is a unit, there is an outlet that I created in August of last year. Last okay. year. It's a monthly electronic magazine called Renaissance. We are in the process of expanding the list. And so anyone who wants to get on it, we're welcome. We are using the opportunity of reflections to realize that we're not doing optimally as we should in communications. I'm having a meeting this afternoon at 2.30 about our webpage. University of Guyana webpage is not what it should be. And so we have got to not only connect with publics internal to the university and external to the university, we've got to find platforms that can easily facilitate the sharing. Uh, I am very big on transparency, but transparency also means you've got to have those mechanisms for it to happen. So Renaissance is one. We did it every month beginning August. We printed a hard edition in August, but every month subsequently it's been electronic. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that you receive it. And when you receive it, add other people to the list so that more people can get it. But I know that we're not where we should be on communicating with the media. I hosted a breakfast for media professionals uh, last semester. I plan to hold another one for media managers. I have an open door if people want to have interviews. But I'm also going to recalibrate our public relations office. We're going to make it a corporate communications entity. We've got to provide some staffing to Paulette Paul, who is in charge of that office. Uh, and I'm going to put it as part of the Deputy Vice Chancellery for Philanthropy, Alumni, and Civic, and communication, civic Engagement, because there's a lot of synergy between what the PR office does and what this new Deputy Vice Chancellor should be. So we're getting there. Mm -hmm. Renaissance is an important that's medium a, that's already in existence. Okay, great. Um, viewers, if you're now tuning in, of course, this is Facing the Nation. Today, I am um, chatting with, of course, the program began with my uh, conversation with the Vice Chancellor of the University of Guyana, Professor Ive Law Griffith, and we're talking about uh, achievements thus far for the University of Guyana within the last six or seven months or so. Um, Professor Griffith, since you would have been introduced to Guyana as the vice chancellor of the University of Guyana, one of the things that you were you would have been big on was reaching out, and you touched on it a, a bit a little earlier in some of your comments. One of the things you were big on is reaching out to the alums and um, international not only bodies but international individuals who may feel the need to help mm -hmm. with um, to develop the University of Guyana. How has that? Um, how, how did that turn out so far? It's a work in progress and it's a set of building blocks that need to be there. And I, but I'm delighted with the achievements we've had so far and I'll give you a three or four indications. 
in addition to what we initiated with the June conference where I brought 45 Guyanese from the diaspora paying their own travel and many of them pay their own accommodation. I did inductions of Guyanese as ambassadors as recently as two weeks in Grenada. I led a team of four Deputy Vice Chancellor for Philanthropy, Alumni in Civic Engagement, Registrar and Director of the Medical School. I was invited to go to the investiture of the new president of St. George's University. Okay. They do medicine, public health and other things. But I said, why don't I, mindful of something that the registrar had encouraged me for a while now, why don't we do more than just invest, going to the investiture? So we had a session with Ghanaians. You would be pleasantly surprised that they are wonderful alums of this university. Some are judges, some are lawyers, some are bankers. And so we set up, at, I, I did an induction of eight, or nine actually, alumni as part to the UG ambassador. They are talking about what goals they will set to fundraise. I did a similar thing with Maryland created a Maryland, Virginia, District of Columbia group. And one of the first things that group did was to accept the call to help us with digitization. We have a lot of, too much paper on campus, records. Mm -hmm. So they sent one person first and then they sent a second person to meet with myself and the registrar. And they, we've now worked out a game plan. They're gonna fund, the guy who's leading this effort is Mr. Ralph Basilio. He and the alums, and some of them are not alums of UG, they're just Guyanese who want to help. They've adopted this, this digitization project. Some of what we're getting is not only money. Some of what we're getting is talent. And I want to encourage people to realize that in making this initiative, my expectation is that you're not going to see the immediate return in investment now. Some of it will it's come down, down, down the way. But I'm delighted that we're making headway with that. And let me give you one practical, simple way. I know that University of Ghana, we, we need to do so much, and we don't have enough human capital. The Renaissance magazine that I told you about, yes. that is, comes out once a month, the person who manages that list is not even a, an alum. She's a UG ambassador based in New York. So she's the person who's been building that list, so you would see the magazine coming out as public relations of University of Ghana. Yeah, yes. It is someone outside, outside of Ghana who says, I know you have limited staff. I will take on this. I just got an invitation from one of our ambassadors in New York, Dr. Dan Paul Narain, who with two other ambassadors, Mr. Roy Singh, Mr. Naro Bali, they started a $1 for UG campaign during Diwali last year. They're going to be launching a similar campaign during Pagua. So they've invited me and I shall be going to New York. For Pagua in New York is one of the largest gatherings of Guyanese. They actually celebrate it oh, yes. at the same time, the same period. Yes. Okay. It's going to be on March 12th, massive Pagua parade. That is alums in the diaspora trying to help do things for us. I know you did say, and it, it, it's a fact that the human capital, the human resources, it's, it's always, almost always difficult. In terms of the Renaissance magazine, is there an, an effort though to see if we can, and, and uh, not to say that the person uh, based in New York is not doing a good job, but is there a special effort being made to see if you can get more persons, maybe one or two of them more brilliant students at the University of Guyana to become involved in the production of that magazine? Students are already involved. Okay. If you look at the credits on the back page, mm -hmm. you see the number. Of, most of the stories done by Renaissance folk are written by, by students, students in the communication program. It gives them opportunities to practice their craft. It gives them opportunity to build a portfolio of credits. Yes. And I'm delighted that Ms. Denise Hopkinson Brahm is the editor. She's director of the Center for Communications. And we use students and we use staff to help to do that magazine. You're absolutely right. And Dr. Paloma Mohammed, Deputy Vice Chancellor for Alumni, Philanthropy, Alumni, and Civic Engagement, she also uses students and she's hired students. So it's not all free work, it's paid work. 
part-time work, but giving them a chance to be en energized in it. Perfect. The last time you were here, one of the things I asked you about was the embracing of uh, you by the University of Guyana family. Do you feel, especially knowing that it's a faculty you've been able to accomplish a lot within the last uh, seven months, do you find that they have embraced not you personally, but the ideas that you have brought and not just the ideas, the physical changes, are they happy with that? I would invite you to ask them, <laughs> but I'll give, you <coughs> I'll give you my reaction. I think understandably some people have been reserved okay. in, re in the reaction to the embrace because they've been promised so much before yes. and they have not had honoring of those promises. But I have been fortunate with my team to be able to not only dream but to do. So you can see physical, tangible evidence of things that are different. You can see the grounds. Matter of fact, when Dr. La uh, Dr. Siebert came from Nottingham, she said, Vice hey, Chancellor, when I was here two years ago, I'll tell you, the campus did not look as this. It's not perfect yet. It's so the evidence of the improvement is, and I think mm -hmm. the evidence of my being inclusive, my being proactive, is enabling more people who had reservations to relax those reservations. But I don't expect complete unanimity. But I'm delighted to get the support of students, of faculty, academic and non-academic, knowing that we still have a journey to go. You mentioned the help, the assistance, monetary assistance, of financial, <coughs> the financial assistance from the government of Guyana, and you said that it would go to the medical, medical uh, uh, sector, medical school sector. Mm -hmm. Would you like to expound a bit on that? Well, you know that University of Guyana, we had lost the medical school accreditation a few years ago. Yes. And it is a sine qua non for this university. It is one of my top priorities to get it back. Okay. We started that journey using some of what we got from that supplemental subvention, for which I'm thankful, mm -hmm. to make physical improvements. Uh, one, of the, one of the bad things that happened as we were in the mode of the reaccreditation preparation is we had a fire. Yes. And a fire right in the health sciences complex. So we had to spend, I think, six to three million dollars in doing things to bring that building back. You come on campus on Monday, you'll see almost a brand new building. Uh, we used some of that money to buy, to do improvements in areas outside of health sciences that are critical. This is some of the money from the from government the subvention. Mm -hmm. Subvention. Matter of fact, I had a reception last night to say thank you for everyone on campus and off campus who helped with that project. And the director of the Center for Information Technology was saying, I got my building painted because of the preparation for <laughs> the accreditation. So it was very important that we may make as much progress in doing all the things possible for that reaccreditation. We got the re draft report uh, earlier this month. If everything goes the way that report suggests, I am confident that we will get reaccreditation, our accreditation reinstated later this year. Just, uh, ju just, just for a minute or two, so that uh, people who are not necessarily familiar with um, not only the University of Guyana, but what happens in terms of tertiary uh, institutions, what would that m really mean for the University of Guyana? When you have a, a, a non-accredited medical school or any professional school, particularly in critical areas like the health sciences, you have limitations in where some of your graduates can go and serve outside of Guyana. They may have to take another exam. They may have to take licensure practices that cost money. But having an unaccredited medical school also reduces their ability to get the best possible students okay. to come. It reduces your ability to get the best possible full-time faculty to come to teach, to do research. But I've, I've said on campus and I've said off campus, the medical school's reaccreditation is not only a faculty of health sciences project. It affects the credibility and branding of the university as a whole. So we have got not only in the interest of the students in the School of Medicine, but we've got in the interest of the whole university to be sure that that major 
element of our university, the major element of our branding, has all that should be right with it to enable the university as a whole to move ahead. Great. Thank you for that, uh, Professor. Finally, <laughs> before I let you go uh, today from this edition, seven months is gone. The next six months and possibly the entire of 2017, mm -hmm. main focus, what are you hoping to achieve come uh, the 27th of January 2018 when we'll possibly have another discussion or even before then sometime in July mm -hmm. what are you hoping to be able to tell myself and of course uh, the viewers in terms of achievements some of what we started setting the stage for last six months will be actualized this six months okay I want to come back when we have our medical school accredited great and do a program that I want to bring the dean, I want to bring the director, I want to bring some of the students. We started on the journey of establishing the School of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation. I intend for that school to get started this coming year. Even if we don't get the facility that we're having a conversation about right now, I'll tell you since it's in the public domain already, it's a building at the corner of Camp and Lamaha Street. We would, if we were to get that building, we'll put the business school in there, we'll put the philanthropy office in there, we're going to establish a business unit. University of Ghana has to be entrepreneurial. We've got to go out and make money. Make money, yes. That would be in there. So for me, at the very least, I want the School of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation to be actualized. We do not do as well as we should in helping our lecturers to teach well we're going to establish a center for excellence in teaching and learning. We don't do as well as we should on research, sponsored research. I would like to see that school for graduate studies and research be actualized. But let me mention two other things which I think are, for me, necessary achievements for this next six months. We have got to get our staff academic and non-academic pay better salaries. Um, we do not pay our people well. We have got to have a facility for our students to have some fun. I started that journey last fall. We've put aside, we've got approval of $55 million. I asked the president of the UGSS to set up a committee, which he did working with our facilities management. We have a design of a two-story facility. We have the location identified. I want that student center to be completed and begun to be used by the end of my first year. And you sound like you have it all planned, sir. And of course, I look forward to having you back uh, to talk more about those, of course, on the other side of uh, the operations. Professor Ivlaw Griffith, Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana. It was a pleasure as it always is thank you very much for coming don't wait until six months to invite me back no i wouldn't i would never do that and i think the viewer is going to be they're going to be expecting me to have you back before then wonderful delighted to be here anytime great thank you very much of course viewers if you're now tuning in this is facing the nation and you missed a very um interesting and informative conversation with the vice chancellor of the university of ghana but as i always urge you those of you who follow me on social media uh, this conversation will be uploaded by the end of the day to youtube and of course uh, facebook this is Facing the Nation on the other side of this very quick break. We'll be getting that public infrastructure update from the minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure. Stay tuned.